In this presentation, we're going to discuss pointers in C. So we're going to look at different factors contributing to the difficulty in learning pointers in C. Address one by one and to have a clear understanding of pointers in C. In this session, we're going to look at memory management in C, which contribute to the understanding of pointers as well. Following a couple of points, which contributes to the difficulty in understanding C. Lack of understanding of memory management lack of understanding of assembly language and sometimes the point of syntax in C is a little bit counterintuitive like array structure and other data types. Also the pointer arithmetic is sometimes counterintuitive. Debugging of the program is very essential for understanding the program as well as pointers in C. We have a little bit of disclaimer up here. It is for a little bit advanced users. So basically we'll be dealing with 32-bit operating system like Win7, PA is disabled. We are assuming that we don't have page file. So some of the portion of the address space is kernel address space which we are not taking care at this point. So don't worry if it is not making much of a sense to you. So let's proceed. So now let's try to understand what is computer memory. So computer memory is an electronic chip connected to the motherboard of the computer. We call it RAM or random access memory. It is very fast in reading and writing data compared to disk. Most importantly, processor can read and write data to memory. Memory can remember or store ones and every eight, one or zero, or a byte of memory can have an address. So every byte has an address. RAM is sometimes called physical memory and the address of physical memory is also called physical address. We'll see more about address later. So now let's concentrate on Windows memory management a little bit. A modern protected mod operating system like Windows or Linux uses something called flat memory model. In that, a 32-bit OS, every application process has access to a 32-bit address space or 2 raised to 32 address locations. Which means, as I mentioned, 2 raised to 32 address for each 8 bits or 1 byte. So 8 into 2 raised to 32 is 4 GB. So each and every process running in a modern operating system like Windows has access to 4 GB of address space. So each application in an OS like Windows 7 is a process. For example, a Word or a Notepad or an Internet browser. Everything is a process in Windows. So you can see process in the Process tab of Task Manager. So let's have a look at the process running in this computer at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to attach Visual Studio and we're going to see the 4 GB of each of those processes. So I have pressed the key combination Control Shift Escape altogether. Control Shift Escape. So I got the Windows Task Manager. In that, I clicked on the process tab. So one of the things is the running processes. So these are the processes. Each of these processes has a 4 GB address space. So it doesn't mean that it has 4 GB of memory allocated, but they can potentially access maximum up to 4 GB. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the addresses inside these processes using Visual Studio Debugger. So I'm going to start a copy of Visual Studio. We have started two Visual Studio instances. One is this and one is this. And I have started a Word application and a Notepad application. So as I mentioned earlier, these applications are two different processes running in this system. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the address space or the memory or the virtual memory of these two applications in Visual Studio. We're going to do a totally different operation in Visual Studio than what we were doing before. We are not going to start a project. Listen to this very carefully. We are not going to start a project in Visual Studio. In this case, we are using Visual Studio as a pure debugger. Attach to process. So once you click attach to process, you get a window like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the word first. Selected that and pressing enter. There is an attach button at the bottom, but it's not visible in the screen. So in your case, probably it should be visible. So in this case, I'm pressing enter. Now the debugger is attached to that process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break into the debugger, break all. So now I have broken 
into the debugger. So in the debugger, all I'm going to look at is memory. So in the debug menu, Windows, memory, memory one. So this is the address space I was talking about. In this case, I have 0x000, zero 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 zero, which is eight zeros. So from, so this is my starting address. And my ending address is 8f. So my address range is from 80 to 8ff, which is nothing but 4GB. So I'm going to select here one byte at a time. Starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So those are my addresses. Addresses of the application word.exe or the word.exe process. So this question mark is supposed to contain the value or the data inside the memory or the address 000. zero, zero. This value is supposed to show the value inside that. But in this case it's showing question mark because this address is not a valid address or it is not an allocated address. So this address is just space. Doesn't point to any valid memory location. Now let's see an address which is valid. So this address contains something. So this contains 1C73DB75. So those are the values inside this address. So once again, so this is the address. This is a value and this is the ASCII value corresponding to it. For example, 73 is S in ASCII. So this is a byte. So this is this is 8 bits actually. So it's a hex value. So C8 is a hex value. F5 is also a hex value. So it is an 8-bit number. Each 8-bit number has an address. So 7, 8, 9, etc. So there is no address like 8.5 or 9.5, etc. So addresses are integers and every byte has address. So this is the address space or the 4GB address space of winword.exe. Now let's do this exact same thing in Notepad. So I have selected the other Visual Studio. I'm going to debug, attach to process, same procedure which I have done. I'm pressing N to go to Notepad. I selected Notepad, I'm pressing Enter. So now I'm gonna break all. So I have broken into. So in this case as well, so 0x, zero, 0, 0. Zero, zero. So in this case as well, I have a 4 GB address space. So 0, 0, 2, 8, FFF. So what that means is every application has 4 GB address space. Now what we're going to prove is the 4GB address space of Word we have seen is completely different from the 4GB address space of Notepad which we are seeing currently. For that, we're going to look at the same address which we have seen in the Word. So this was the address which I was looking at Word. Now let us see what is inside Notepad in this address. So in this, in the case of Notepad, this address is bogus which means that this is an unallocated address in Notepad. But in Word, if you go back to Word, this particular address was allocated. So same address. So I'm pressing Alt-Tab to switch Visual Studio. So this is Notepad. And this is Word. And this address is exactly same. In Notepad, it contains no value or it is not allocated. In Word, it is allocated and it contains 1C. It also proved that 
the address space for each application is unique why same address has different value in different processes we'll, we'll see that later how the operating system implement this this particular magic so now let's see one more address to make sure that we are all on the same page again I have got this address from the previous analysis of these two programs so I'm looking at this particular address in notepad so it contains a0 so now I'm copying this control C and going to word and seeing what is inside that control V enter so the value inside the address is 08 and value inside notepad is a0 and all subsequent values are different so it's the same address two different address spaces which means that two different processes have two different values so that is about address space little bit about address so addresses are as I mentioned 32 bit so this is an 8 digit hex number which is 8 into 4 32 -bit. so this is a 32 bit address so all the addresses are 32 bit in a 32 bit operating system and this is the value and this is the ASCII value of the corresponding actual hex value so let's go back to our presentation so we have seen this demo task manager so we have attached Visual Studio to two different processes one is a word and notepad and uh, found out that two different values in the same address etc now let's get a little bit into the theoretical part of what we have seen so what is a process so process is nothing but a 4 GB address space at the end of the day so the whole purpose of process is isolation of one program from another all programs should feel like they are the only one running in the system the address space is giving them that feeling so address space of one program is different from another so in a multitasking operating system this is the most important thing so the memory isolation so the memory used by a program should not be accessed by any other program at one point in time this also means that whatever runs inside the notepad process or however the notepad program has written it cannot affect word or corrupt words memory because they are two different data spaces so how that is implemented now we're gonna have a very brief look at the implementation of this address spaces or memory isolation so two technology works hand in hand which is segmentation and paging so protection and paging helps the OS to implement process or address space or 4GB virtual address space in the system so segmentation and paging so we are just going to have an overview of this and um, we have a very detailed presentation using WinDebug on how things works in depth so here is what we need to know all application has potential 4 GB address space all the address spaces are different and mapped to different physical memory so underlying physical memory for different addresses are different when we say memory address etc in the context of a program running in Windows we are mostly referring to some portion of the virtual address space of that program we are referring to the 4 GB of that program we are not referring to the RAM of the computer we'll make this clear as we go through this presentation once again all the code and data or any other information related to that application is inside the 4 GB address space very important point so whatever you do inside your program your main if you are creating an array if you're calling a printer function everything is inside your 4 GB address space you cannot access any other address space or any other programs memory 
So which means that from an application standpoint, the address space is the universe to that program. It thinks that that is the world. So a little bit about protection. In a multitasking operating system, as I mentioned, each task needs its own memory region which other tasks cannot access. For example, Notepad and Word. Both need independent memory regions which cannot be addressable or accessible from other application. Just like in a town, each family needs a house to live their own. That is the same thing in computer as well. If every program share the same address space, everyone will be corrupting each other. Every task running in an operating system needs its own space. So again, I'm repeating a couple of points here. Each process can potentially access up to 4 GB of memory. It does not mean that every process has 4 GB of physical memory. It just means that process can access maximum up to 4 GB. 4 GB of a process is completely different from the 4 GB of another process. Any address in the 4 GB may or may not be allocated. That is why the name address space for the 4 GB. So the unallocated space were the ones we were seeing with the question mark, which means that there is no RAM or physical memory associated with that particular address we assume that we don't have any virtual memory or page file. In our case, allocation means the RAM. So an application can access or use only memory which is allocated in the 4GB address space. Allocation is done by the operating system by the request from the application. Say an M alloc or indirectly on stack an array of 100 integers. One particular application process cannot access any memory outside it 4GB and it thinks that 4GB address space is the entire system which explains the name virtual address space. As the name suggests, address space contain addresses. So an address is just any integer number between 0 and 2 raised to 32 which is 4GB. If a variable, which is a memory location, contains address, we normally call it a pointer in C programming language. Addresses are normally shown in hexadecimal format. So a 32-bit address is any number between 0x follows 8 zeros and 0x follows 8 ff. Example is 0x1234 abcd. So this is a hexadecimal 32-bit address. So this is a very quick explanation of the behavior we have seen in Visual Studio in our demo. Why we got two different values in the same address in two different processes? The very quick answer is the paging subsystem inside the CPU is resolving that address to different physical addresses. So this is a very simple picture of address spaces we have myapp.exe, notepad.exe and the word which we have seen. All the access to the address is coming to the CPU. In the CPU there is something called paging subsystem which translate the virtual address to RAM. So suppose these two addresses are same but the paging subsystem is translating it to two different physical address and we are getting a different value. So I was talking about allocation a lot, but I didn't explain what was it. So what is that? So allocation is nothing but mapping a virtual address to a physical address. So ultimate action happens for allocation is adding a page table entry to the page table. We said that each process has 4GB of address space. Now what is inside the 4GB of address space? So mainly two things. One is allocated or committed regions. Free or non-committed regions. So I'm not going into the details of reserved, etc. So I'm going to broadly, broadly classify into allocated and non-allocated. So this is pretty much the view of it. So you have 0x follows 8 zeros. 
So you have address starting from 0x follows 8 zeros to 0x follows 8ff. So this is an address which is a valid address which is 0x1234 abcd. So you'll have the same address here as well. So notepad.exe and hello world.exe. So two different address spaces. So you have some allocated chunks in both address spaces. So now let's discuss about pointer. So it is an allocated memory location of 32-bit in size in the 4GB address space which an application process has in operating system like Windows or Linux. Pointer contains a number less than 2 raised to 32 which is normally a C programmer interpret as an address to some other location in the same 4GB address space. So pointer contains a number. Pointer is nothing but a variable which contains a 32-bit number. And normally we interpret as an address to some other locations in the same 4GB address space. So again, pointer is a variable of size 32-bit which normally contains an address to another variable or block of memory. In other words, we programmers interpret the 32-bit value in a pointer as an address. Practically, pointer can contain any number which can go up to 2 raised to 32 in a 32-bit operating system. It is like a visiting card which normally contains the name and address of a person. One can print a visiting card with a list of his favorite TV shows or something very different, but we normally don't do it. Like that, pointer can contain anything. It can contain the ID of a student in a class or anything like that, but we don't do it normally. So we keep address to the address space of that program inside a pointer variable. So here is a little bit of syntax for pointers in C. So this is how you declare a pointer variable. So int star ptr. This is a pointer to an integer variable or char star ptr. It's a pointer to a character variable. In general, data type star, then the variable name is a pointer. So we have discussed that pointer is just a number. We just interpret it as address. So now what is the difference between pointer and a number? Say for example, int star and int. In fact, there is no big difference from a memory standpoint. Both are 32 bit. But a few differences. So the pointer size is always equal to the bitness of the operating system. For example, in a 32 bit operating system, the pointer size will be always 32 bit. Or in a 64 bit, always 64. Or 16 bit, it is 16 bit. The pointer variable supports certain special operations like dereferencing, pointer arithmetic, etc. by the language and the compiler. So we're going to see this syntax complications later. Now we're going to see a simple pointer application in C programming language. Also we're going to introduce the ampersand operator. So I'm going to start a new project in Visual Studio. So we have a little program up here. It, it has only two statements, int a equal to 20 and int star ptr equal to ampersand a. So let's try to understand what it does. Int a equal to 20, I'm assigning 20 to a variable. Now I am declaring a integer pointer type variable called ptr. And I'm assigning that pointer variable to ampersand a. So what is ampersand a? Ampersand a is the address of this variable. So the value of this variable is 20. We know that. So a contains 20. So now what is the address of the variable? So address of the variable is ampersand a. Now let's debug and understand what really this values contain. So I'm going to start debugging. So first, A contains 20. We know that. Now let's see what is ampersand A. Ampersand A. So ampersand A is this number. 
so this number this is the this is the address of a so what it contains it contains 14 what is 14 14 is nothing but 20 in hex what this particular statement does is it is copying 14 to this particular address so now what is PTR going to contain so PTR is going to contain ampersand a which is nothing but this particular value so let's look at that yeah PTR is contained 0 0 2 triple F double zero this is the basics of pointer so this is how the syntax so the ampersand operator will give the address of variable now let's have a quick look at the assembly of this program so this is the instruction which is equivalent to this line of code so move d word ptr a 14h so in this case a is a is treated as address so in this statement what happens is 14 H or 20 is being copied or moving to this particular address which is a in this case so once that is done what we are doing copying the address of a so this instruction is called lot effective address so what this instruction does says the address of a is copying to EAX register so after the statement after this particular statement EAX register will contain the address of a so lot effective address once that is done we are copying again EAX to the pointer variable which is our PTR so D word PTR so this is very similar statement so this statement and the statements are very similar so instead of 14 H this is the address of A which we obtained from this instruction so once again this instruction copy 14 H to A this instruction copy the address of A to EAX register and this instruction copy EAX register to PTR so that's it so we have seen this program and we have looked at the memory we have understood and we have seen the addresses in play also we have seen the disassembly the three different instructions created by these two lines of code so now let's go back to our presentation now what the pointer is pointing to so anything in the 4GB address space we have seen so for example a pointer which is allocated on the stack say for example an array of 100 contains practically junk values if you are not initialized so in the best case the pointer points to a valid allocated chunk of memory in that case it is in star PTR for example M alloc 100 it's again pointing to an array of 100 allocated bytes so we'll see M, M alloc later so the point here is it can point to a valid memory location as well which normally the case it can point to another set of pointer as I mentioned before in the allocate memory what are the main uses of pointers so there are many uses of pointers but all the uses of pointers is revolving around pretty much one single use sharing data between different parts of the application mostly huge chunks of data it is like you give an address of a house or business location printed in a business card you hand over the card it's very easy and that person can go into that particular location so if you don't use pointers if you're using value it is like you're building another house instead of giving the location so that is you know in programming it is even possible in practical case it is not even possible to build another location 
the single most important purpose of pointer or using addresses is sharing of data between different parts of the application. So now the question comes, sharing of data between different parts of application is a common task which may be required for other programming language as well. So sharing of data is a computer is pretty much all about sharing of data, right? So it is, it is everywhere, like programming in Java, C Sharp, everything, JavaScript. None of this programming language has something called pointers. Why is that? The fact is that all of the programming language has pointers, one way or the other, hidden inside it. They don't call it a pointer, but something else. For example, in Java and C Sharp, the reference variables are nothing but pointers. Now another question comes, then why C or C++ is notorious with pointers? So the reason is, C and C++ allow a lot of counterintuitive syntax to manipulate and access data by the pointer. While other languages like Java or C Sharp normally has some well-defined intuitive function to do that, sometimes they call it interfaces or data abstraction. So they don't allow you to touch the, the addresses directly. So they abstract everything and give you functions to do that. They are more intuitive. Here is a pictorial representation of the program we have just seen. Instead of ampersand A, the function I am using is malloc 100. It is pretty much like ampersand A from a syntax standpoint. So we have the address space, the entire address space for hello world.exe, which is a 4GB address space. This is a 4GB address space the hello part. Inside that 4GB address space we have a we have an integer pointer called PTR. So what PTR contains? PTR is containing the value inside PTR is 789AC000. So that is the value inside PTR. Even PTR has an address. 0x1234abcd that is the address of PTR which is which is not very relevant to us so PTR is a variable of size 32 bit and it contains this particular value this particular value is pointing to an allocated chunk of memory so allocation is done using malloc so that is 100 100 bytes actually so that is what malloc does. It allocates a memory region inside the address space. So all a, all so all the allocation, including the PTR as well as the malloc, is inside the address space. Very important point. So after this statement, this is how things looks. In PTR will point to that allocated chunk. Now you can use in PTR to modify this particular memory to save something or retrieve something or whatever you want you can do with that address which PTR holds. Now one last thing, what is the relation between pointers and the protection technique we have discussed earlier like paging and segmentation? So let's try to understand that. So this rectangle shows the physical memory. So our program is residing inside the physical memory. We are accessing a memory location, PTR, from the program. So PTR, all the addresses as I mentioned earlier is virtual addresses inside the virtual address space which is going into the CPU. So the instruction you are executing is something like move dword PTR XYZ. So we are giving a virtual address into the CPU. First it goes into the segmentation unit. Segmentation unit in flat mode doesn't do much so the same virtual address is coming out of segmentation unit. Segmentation unit 
checks a couple of security things which we are not going to discuss here so output of segmentation unit is pretty much the same address no change so what the paging does so paging unit will do something on the virtual address paging unit has something called page table entries in in a table called page table so this table is called page table so what page table contains page table contains virtual address to physical address mapping so the CPU will look up in the page table so this is the page table it contains a virtual address and corresponding physical address so CPU will look up for the virtual address we have given here and it will translate to the physical address or the RAM address and it will access the physical memory so that is how the translation happens so this is called address translation so this is a miniature version of the address translation In one of our future presentation, we're going to see a full-fledged address translation for an x86 platform running on Windows. But for the time being, this is what we have to understand. So pretty much we have seen this demo so this is about access violation for example if you are trying to access or trying to dereference or do anything on an unallocated address you will get something called access violation that is an exception you are getting from the CPU so we are not going to discuss this at the moment so directly now we are going to the summary of what we have seen so a 32-bit application has 4 GB address space all memory it access or anything matters to that program is inside that address space all the application running on the system has different 4 GB address space a pointer is a variable or a memory location inside the above 4 GB which has a number inside it which is interpreted by the programmer as an address to some other location in the same 4GB address space and that's it thank you very much